So the last question, question nine. Um, the diagram shows part of the curve two cos a third x, where x is in radians. That's going to want to remember for later. And the line weight is k. Right. Just a quick, let's get a quick feel for what's happening with this graph. Two, that means it's a stretch. So in fact, two parallel to the y-axis, isn't it? So these points here, this must be two and minus two, the other and lower bounds. A third x in there. Now that's the other way. That means it's a stretch. Scale back to one over a third in that direction. One over a third is three. So it's a stretch scale back to three. So that that end point, which normally in a cos graph is at 2 pi, is three times as far away. So that point at the end there, now we know, must be 6 pi, where it completes its, its cycle. So this point, halfway along, must be 3 pi. That point is normally pi, isn't it? That must be 3 pi, because it's 3 times as far along. So let's think about what the symmetry in the graph is doing now. Um, the smallest positive solution of the equation, 2 cos third x is k, and it's developed by alpha. Find the next smallest positive solution of the equation, 2 cos third x equals k. So they've drawn it for us. That's where the line meets the curve again. So that is that point. Let's do this. Down there. And that distance there must also be alpha, because it's symmetrical. So if that distance is alpha, just as that was, it's alpha before 6 pi. So the answer is 6 pi minus alpha. They did actually give you the mark if you didn't spot that we were supposed to be working radians and you wrote 1080 minus alpha, which would be what it would be if you worked in degrees. Part B, the smallest positive solution of the equation 2 plus the third x equals minus k. Well, if it's minus k instead, minus k would be the horizontal line down there at minus k. And where does that meet the graph? Well, it meets it here. And again, the same kind of symmetry that's in the graph says that if that distance there is alpha, that distance there is alpha as well. So the second one is 3 pi, take away that distance of alpha. So that one is 3 pi minus alpha. Either those two that, was, that was badly done. I don't, you know, very few people got the marks for that. So I did have, there were a few people who got it correct if this hadn't had a third in here. So wrote things like 2 pi take away alpha and pi take away alpha as a minimum. But it comes to the air. So one third meaning that it's all stretched that makes a big difference. Now people did pick up marks. One, quite a lot of people got one mark in the next bit. The curve is shown in the printed answer book. Sketch the curve sine of third x. So you were given, you were given a graph that did that. And that was, that was what was drawn in your printed answer booklet. So now, what, what we've already worked out with this is that this is at 2, this is minus 2, this is 6 pi over here, isn't it? We're going to draw a sine graph. Now, the sine graph has the same stretch having applied to it. So it's got the same period, hasn't it? it, it kind of, its complete cycle is the same distance. The difference is it doesn't have the 2 in front of it. So it's not going as high up and slow down. So we're going to draw a sine graph. There's the midpoint, isn't it? And there's 6 pi. So it's going to do all that. I've kind of gone a little bit too high up now on this bottom branch here. Um, but it, it ought to be clear that that point there is at 1. And that point there, I think I've got away with it. That point there is at minus 1. Um, because it's not been stretched in that direction, it's just a bad one. Um, it was, they were looking for an ending at the same point that that was its maximum, so at zero when that's at the maximum. And at this point where it crosses the y-axis, the x-axis, has to be the point where that is at its minimum point. Finally, for the last four marks of the paper, 
find the x coordinate for the point of intersection. That is, when does, when does sine of third x equal to cos of third x? And we've done loads of questions, haven't we, where you, you have just sine and cos of them and no other number hanging around, because you know that to solve that, you have to get it in terms of tan. You have to divide by cos of third x. Now, it's, we divided by cos of third x here. And you end up with sine of third x over cos of third x. And you're left with 2 on that side. Now, this is quite important. And I don't know, maybe we haven't talked about this enough. But if you do sine a over cos a, you get tan a. If you do sine theta over cos theta, you get tan theta. If you do sine a third x over cos a third x, you must get tan a third x equals 2. Notice that the third x bit doesn't end up cancelling out when we do this. OK, that's, that's what we're going to end up with. So then we're going to try and solve that. We're going to do inverse tan of 2. Third x is inverse tan of 2. And I've left my rule on the side of borrowed marks. Can I see if I take by the duty box? Um, oh, but it's in, it's, it's in degrees at the moment. So inverse tan of 2 gives us 1.107. So we're going to put that on our cast diagram. We'll deal with the symmetry in this because we already know a little bit about symmetry already. It was tan, it was positive there, it's 1.107, so that's 56 degrees, I think. <laughs> the other value would, of course, be what you get when you're going around to here. So that is pi plus 1.107. So that's a third, we've gone on green, third x is 1.107 and 4.249. And so x is three times these values. And we're, we're doing it to, to uh, three significant figures. So that one is 12.7, three significant figures. The other one is 3.32. The three significant figures. And they and our final answer. The notice we're expecting only to get two answers. We don't need to worry about going more around the cast diagram or anything like that. We're only expecting two answers because look, when we did the grant, we only got two answers and there they were. Okay. And that's maths.